In this video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about how to keep great blue herons and just herons in general away from your outdoor ponds and how to stop them from eating your fish, your koi, your goldfish, whatever you guys keep inside your pond. So herons are definitely the most notorious pond predator and chances are if you're watching this video you probably just recently suffered a heron attack on your pond. I'm not going to give you guys one method or two methods to keep them away, but 10 different methods in this video to keep herons away from your pond. Now these 10 methods are not going to be in any particular order besides method 1 because I think that one's definitely the most important. And method 1 is going to be pond design. Before you even make your pond, you need to take some things into account in order to keep herons away from your pond. One thing that's very important to know about herons is that they will typically refuse to walk inside of a pond that's any deeper than around 18 inches or 2 feet. So if you make your pond deeper than 2 feet in all areas, you have now eliminated the ability for the heron to walk around inside your pond. Now he can obviously still hunt from the sides, but you've dramatically reduced the area that he's able to hunt. So you want to make your pond deeper than two feet and you also want to make the sides very steep that way he can't stand on any of the sides to hunt the sides that are shallower now this will eliminate your ability to make plant ledges you can still have the plant ledges if you want but you will need to completely fill them up with potted plants that he's not really able to stand on so for pond design you want to go deep in the pond and you want to have very steep sides to make it impossible for him to stand inside of the pond. Now one other thing you can do in your pond planning is you can make the sides that you're not going to view from either have some shrubs, some bushes, or very high rock walls. That way he's not able to hunt from any of those ledges on the sides of the pond and you've now eliminated those as options for him and he's only able to hunt from the one little area on the ledge that you view your fish from. So moving on to method two, this one's probably the one you see most commonly and is also one of the least expensive methods to stop herons. And this is the fishing line method. And this one just involves setting up a bunch of small stakes around the edges of your ponds and then wrapping fishing line in between the stakes in zigzag formations. And what this does is it eliminates pretty much the ability for the heron to navigate inside the pond if he is able to walk inside your pond. He will get caught up in this fishing line and eventually just leave frustrated. And also, if you do it a lot around the edges of the pond, it will also kind of get his feet caught in it and it might startle him enough to make him leave the pond because he doesn't see it there and then he feels it on his leg and he might just fly off. However, this method has been outsmarted by many herons and you will see lots of videos of herons actually just stepping over the line. So I usually only suggest the fishing line method if you're going to do it in combination with some of the other methods that I list here. And if you are going to do the fishing line method, I would also suggest that you get either 30 pound or 50 pound test. That way it's not easily broken by a large animal like a heron. Moving on to method three, this one is also very cheap and easy and will additionally improve the water quality in your pond. This one's going to be floating pond plants. Things like your water lettuce, water hyacinth, frog bit, lily pads, and duckweed. All of these types of plants will sit on the surface of your water and help improve the water quality. And they'll also provide the additional protection of covering the surface of your water from a predator like a heron. A heron can't hunt what it can't see. So if you have a bunch of surface plants, you've made it that much harder for a heron to locate your fish in the pond and grab them. However, you are also making it more difficult for you yourself to see the fish, so there is that added drawback, but the plants will improve your water quality and also make your pond look a lot better too. Now pond plants aren't always going to be possible, especially when you get those larger koi that love to tear up all the plants in the pond. So you can do something like what I have here. I put all my floating pond plants besides the lily pads inside little nets, little floating pond nets, and I'll put a link to those in the video description if you're interested in those. And I try to strategically place them around the edges of the pond, the edges that I see the heron visit most. And those floating pond nets will allow me to have pond plants that will thrive and not get their roots eaten. So moving on to method four, this one will cost you probably around 50 to $60 and is somewhat effective. This is gonna be the fake heron method. 
So this one's pretty simple and straightforward. You're just buying one of these fake herons and you are setting it up somewhere around the edge of your pond in order to try to fend off the actual heron because real herons are territorial. Now, you can see that mine has this kind of pole coming out of his backside. That's an adjustable height feature because herons are territorial and they will dominate another heron that is smaller than them. So if the heron that visits your pond is taller than your decoy, he's not going to be afraid of it. So I can take off those fake legs and I can actually mount him on that pole and I can adjust his height to make him taller in order to make the real heron think that this is a larger bird. Now this one also has mixed results. A lot of times herons will catch on that it's fake and they've even been known to attack and peck at the fake one in a territorial fight. One way to defend against this is to move your fake heron to different locations once every couple of days or once a week or however often you need to and this is going to stop the real heron from thinking it's a fake. It will make him believe it a bit more. Method 5 is going to be air bubbles, air stones, any type of surface ripple that you can produce with air. And this is very helpful because this kind of produces the same effect as the floating plants. It obscures the surface of the water. It makes it tougher for the heron to see in at the fish underneath. So if you strategically place some air stones around the edges of your pond where the heron is hunting, it'll make it a lot harder for him to get a clear view of your fish. Now if you are having extreme heron problems, one idea that you could do is you could set up a ton of air stones around the edges inside your pond and you can have them switch activated so that whenever you come over to the pond to observe your fish, you can turn off the switch and the air stones will turn off and you'll be able to see your fish. And then when you leave the pond, you can flip it back on and your air defense system will keep your pond safe. Method six is gonna be dogs. If you have a dog that is either on an invisible fence or fenced off in your yard or just knows not to leave the yard, this is a great defense system against herons. The dogs that will go after birds like herons are an amazing way of keeping herons out of your yard and away from your pond. If a heron gets chased away by a dog at the pond even a handful of times, he's not going to want to go to that pond anymore. He's going to deem that pond too dangerous to hunt in and your pond will be safe. And I also think it's a pretty good excuse to go out and give a shelter dog a new home. Now hopefully your dog doesn't actually kill or catch the great blue heron. Hopefully he just scares him away. Method 7 isn't necessarily a way to keep the herons away, but more of a way to protect your fish if a heron does show up. This is going to be the koi castle method, and these koi castles come under many different names. You can build your own or you can buy one, but it's basically a structure that sits at the bottom of the pond that allows your fish to swim inside of it or under it in the event that a predator shows up, and this way a predator will not be able to get at them. It's good to have something like this in any pond to protect them from something like raccoons, herons, maybe even otters if an otter manages to get into your pond. So I would definitely suggest trying one of these out. This next one is one that I haven't personally tried myself, but I have heard many people recommend it. And that's the use of sound. Many people will suggest using radios, maybe on some type of speaker system next to your pond when you're not home and set it to something like a talk radio show where there's constant human voice because the herons will try to stay away from human voice. They won't really be comfortable with it. So this will help deter them. And some people have also suggested using wind chimes around your pond between the noise that the wind chime makes and the shininess of it when it blows in the wind. It will also help deter them. Now, like I said, I haven't tried either of those out, but I have heard from people that they are good ways of keeping herons away from your pond. Number nine is a method that will not only deter herons, but it will also deter raccoons, fisher cats, anything that's picked up by motion. This is the motion sensor sprinkler method. They sell these motion sensor sprinklers to help protect ponds and gardens, and it's basically just a sprinkler with either a power cord going to it or a 9 volt battery and water hooked up to it. And when any animal passes within its range, it just starts shooting off a couple of bursts of water, maybe for a couple of seconds or a minute. Some of them have adjustable timers, but basically this will scare off any predators that enter the vicinity of your pond. And these sprinklers usually go for anywhere between 50 to maybe $100. And you do just have to be careful the way you angle it because you could also end up spraying yourself by accident. So a little bit tricky setting them up, but they definitely are effective. And number 10 is probably the most effective method 
but also the ugliest method, and that's netting. That's just entirely covering your pond in netting to protect it from all predators. It will also stop debris from falling in your pond. So the effectiveness rate of this is pretty much going to be 100% against herons. It's going to take a very, very smart heron to get past this. But like I said, it also really, really takes away from the beauty of your pond. So it comes at a cost. Saving your fish will come at a cost. But if all else fails and nothing is working, you might have to resort to this. Now that is the 10 methods that I have on how to keep herons away from your ponds. I would love to hear from you guys in the comments if you have a method that I did not list. And I'd also love to hear your experiences with herons and your ponds down below in the comments. If you guys found this video helpful in any way at all, hit that like button down below. And if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button for lots of awesome pond videos just like this. And as always guys, thank you for watching.